Hello, Zol here. As you guys may know, chemistry majors require a lot of different classes, and among these are the prerequisite classes. The thing about these prerequisite classes is they don't actually count towards your major classes, but you need to take them to take major classes. And with a chemistry major, unlike a lot of other majors, these prereqs aren't just kind of easy classes that you can totally whip out with no effort and they can actually be pretty difficult classes and a lot of them aren't even within the chemistry department. That's right, you have to take a lot of classes for the chem major that aren't chemistry classes. So in this video I want to break down these classes and which ones you'll need to take that is pretty universal at most colleges. Of course some universities are going to have a slightly different layout of maybe one or two classes you'll need to take, but almost every college will have these same classes as prereqs, mostly in the math and physics departments. And with that, let's hop right into it. First things first, let's get into the physics classes. Now, all chemistry majors are generally gonna need to take two semesters of physics classes. These are gonna be your Calc-based Physics 1 and Calc-based Physics 2. These are the same classes any first year uh, physics majors have to take. And in the first semester, this is pretty similar to some physics stuff you learned in high school. Of course, in high school, this is all algebra-based physics. And once you've moved into college, you're gonna be doing Calc-based physics. It's sort of the same topics, just more in depth, and you're gonna learn more on where all these equations you're using are coming from. In this first semester physics class, this is mainly stuff like uh, kinematics and harmonic motion, you know, really basic movement of objects type things. You'll probably go into friction and, you know, a lot of basic stuff that you went over in high school, maybe just with more challenging problems from a calculus-based perspective and slightly more difficult. And of course, since it's a one semester class, it's going to be a lot more compact than what you took in high school. This class is generally not too bad. I didn't have a lot of trouble with it, but for some people, if maybe the math stuff isn't your strong suit, this might be a bit more difficult. But otherwise, this is a pretty okay class you don't have to worry about. Now, after you take your first semester physics class, you have to, of course, take your second semester physics class. Now, this class I find to be a lot more intensive. You get into a lot more in-depth and harder topics within the physics umbrella, and generally this isn't stuff that you really went over in high school, even with some AP physics and all. And with this class, you are going to go over things like heat transfer, thermodynamics, waves, optics, uh, electronics, electromagnetism. It's all pretty cool stuff. And I think this class is really where you're gonna need to put your focus as a chemistry major because the stuff, especially you learn about waves, uh, electromagnetism, stuff like that, it's all gonna be actually super important within the chemistry major. This class, a bit more difficult than first semester physics, which is to be expected, but it's actually a really interesting class, and this is the class you really need to absorb the information because a lot of what you go over in here is gonna be useful later on in your chem major. And it should also be said that with both these uh, physics classes, you're gonna to need to take a lab portion of this. And I have to warn you, these lab portions in most college intro STEM classes are super tedious. You're gonna be taking like a lot of hours a week just to do the lab because you have to go into the lab for a few hours, do the lab report, etc. And even with some chemistry labs, they can be boring, but at least you're like messing with chemicals and all, but maybe it's just because I'm not a physics major, but I find these physics labs mind numbingly boring. It's just like shooting a laser through a prism or watching stuff fall over or messing with springs. I couldn't stand my physics labs and they were a total drag. So that's your physics lab warning. So we have our physics classes down. Now let's move on to our calculus classes. Now, if you don't already have credit for any calculus classes, maybe from your AP Calc classes you took in high school, you will have to take a lot of calculus classes as prereqs for your chemistry major. And also, if you're taking these Calc-based physics classes, generally you'll need them as a pre or co-requisite. So you'll have to take them at the same time or you'll maybe even have to take these calculus classes before your physics classes. I took my physics classes over one summer and that was actually pretty good because I didn't have to take away from my chemistry class schedule by taking physics classes over the summer. 
with these calc classes, the first one you'll have to take is Calculus 1. And Calculus 1 goes over similar topics that if you took calculus in high school, you also went over. This is laying down the basics of limits, derivatives, you know, the total bare basics of calculus and kind of what calculus is. Now, after you take this first semester of Calc 1, you'll have to take Calculus 2. Calculus 2 is also, if you took a higher level calculus in high school, similar thing, but Calculus 2 is all the meat and potatoes of what I think of calculus, and that's integrals. And these integrals are going to be super, super important as you get into your higher level chem classes. Integrals are kind of the basis of a lot of this higher level physics and math. So you're going to need to know your derivatives and integrals from Calc 1 and 2 super, super well. You should have these down. It'll make your life so much easier. But uh, other than integrals in Calc 2, you'll also go over series, which are a lot less relevant for the chemistry major, but they are part of the Calc classes. Now, a lot of schools will just require Calculus 1 and 2 for a chemistry major. That being said, there are plenty of schools that will also require Calc 3, and even if your school doesn't necessarily require Calculus 3, it can also be a strongly recommended co or prerequisite for your PCHEM classes. Now, Calculus 3 is also called multivariable calculus because you're working with multiple variables, and this is much more what's going to be applicable to the real world of, you know, higher level chemistry and all. And the main thing I think from here is partial derivatives. But again, if you have a school layout where it's strongly recommended, a lot of the time your PCHEM class will go over this within the class. So if you're really into calculus or you just want to be super prepared for PCHEM, you can take multivariable calc. Now there's a lot of other math classes which might give you a deeper understanding of PCHEM and the math that's going on when you take that class, but they're not strictly necessary to take that class, and a lot of schools won't require them at all. Now, if you are a bit nervous about what math you're going to need for PCHEM, I can't recommend Macquarie's PCHEM book enough. This uh, book is great. It has little sections that are purely math sections before you use them in a chapter and you can go through and it'll tell you the exact math you'll need to know to do those PCHEM problems and understand those concepts. And that's really helpful to break down what you need to know. Or even if you haven't taken your calculus classes in a while, it's a really good review. Those are the basic chemistry, math, and physics prerequisites. Some other chem classes that are more on elective side of like advanced PCHEM and all might require some different math classes, but for just a basic chemistry major, this is all you need. Hope you liked the video, and I'll see you guys next time.